Definitely, we almost have to try and punch above our weight, really, I think. In, if you look at the last few transfer windows, in terms of transfer fees, we've spent very little, certainly compared to other teams in the league and certainly compared to other teams around us in the league at the moment. It was almost, these are the players we're thinking, these are the players he's thinking. And there was a few names on there that we both had on our list and we'd done the work and Kenneth Powell was one of them. And we handed over a dossier to him and I think off the top of my head, I think it was 36 pages long. That's the amount of work had gone into that. My name's Andy Belk and I'm QPR Head of Recruitment. I went through the analyst route originally. Um, my my background, I did a sports science degree at uh, University of Worcester and then went and did a master's in performance analysis uh, a long time ago. Now. Um, and then I, I went to work out in Dubai for a year. I worked for a company called Prozone, which at the time was one of the, the analysis leading companies. Um, and I think it's called Stats now. Um, yeah, so I worked out in Dubai for a year and then I had the opportunity to come here 14 and a half years ago, I think it was now. Yeah, so I came into the club, Ian Dowie was the manager at the time. Um, it's, there, was, there was no performance analysis department then as such, it was a relatively new, um, new, relatively new into the industry. Um, so I was all in charge of the first team, but there was nothing below, so I sort of had to build the department. Um, and, and now I think most clubs, certainly if not all clubs, have got analysts through most age groups and, and several for the first team. So I was, I was the performance analyst for seven and a half years, I think it was. Um, and then I think at the time, the, the club and, and Les, when he came into the role, decided they wanted somebody as an analyst on the recruitment side. Again, that was just starting off in several clubs are starting to do it, uh, just to provide an extra layer from the recruitment side of it, really. So in the background, really, with, um, with data, with videos, scouting coordinator. I think my job title at the time was recruitment analyst and scouting coordinator. Uh, and that lasted for, I think, three and a half years, I think it was, before I stepped into the role I am now. Yeah, how we, how we work as a recruitment department, we, the player has to go through five stages, really, from our point of view. So, so the, if you think about it as a pyramid, the, the bottom stage would be an identification thing. So again, that would be data, videos, we may be at a game watching a specific player, but another player might do well. Um, so there's many ways for the identification process. And as they go up the pyramid, so stage two would be more video work. Again, we do a lot of video work before we go and see players live, because we like to keep it as a more focused approach, uh, rather than just on the off chance going to a game and the off chance of players playing. Um, and then it goes up, stage three will be the scouts, uh, part-time and full-time scouts. Um, stage four will be myself and then stage five is, is a target if you like and that's um, where myself and the manager and, and Les sit down and these would be our recommendations, these would be this is what we think they'll cost, this is what you know we think they'll bring positives and negatives uh, and then that's where the dossier comes into it really and, and all the information we've collected is you know presented. There's various players that, that get near enough to the top and then for whatever reason, but we, we can't do them. Uh, and then they're not just discarded because, you know, they may not be applicable this window and they may not be applicable in six months time window. But in two windows when their contract's coming up, they might then come to the fore. Um, you know, at the, at there and then they might be too expensive for us to go and get. So th that happens all the time. Um, it needs to be, you know, everything needs to fit really for us to sign a player. So I, I came into this role in February 2020. Um, so my, my first window it would have been the summer of that of that year. Um, it was a strange time at the time because I think a month later, obviously, the, the global pandemic really kicked in. Um, so we had to do things differently, which I think helped me and helped the department in the long term because it enabled me to put changes in place, um, which I think we probably needed to do. It made us more efficient as a department. Just from the fact that the live games wasn't readily accessible, you couldn't get into many live games unless it was the last two or three opposition games, which we obviously utilised from a recruitment point of view. So it enabled us to focus more on a data and a video thing and, and to be honest, it made us a little bit more streamlined. We use data a lot, we use videos a lot, uh, we use our contacts a lot. Um, that's not to say we just use solely them, we're obviously out of live games, we, we've covered a lot of live games this year. I think we're already up to 
I think it's just under 800 live games uh, we've done as a department. Um, so initially, obviously from the, the markets, we're probably not that visible in. We do a lot of data work and then a lot of video work and then it progresses onto the live games. We, we, very, we try to be very efficient in that way rather than us just stepping on a plane or a train and just randomly going and watching a game because obviously that has a financial element to it as well. I'll use the Kenneth Powell one as, as an example one you he mentioned was. there. It's... And then Field chips up the cross. It's not a bad one. Oh, it's going to be a goal! Yes! A first hey, hey, hey. Queen's Park Rangers goal for Kenneth Powell! Lovely cross from Sam Field. And Kenneth Powell loops a header into the net. We'd been following him as a department, I think for three or four windows previously before we signed him. Um, initially, I think I believe he was identified to us, but from a data point of view, uh, from player, our player profiles and our metrics that we use. Um, so then we did a lot of video works on him, a video work on him, and then um, obviously then we're going out and watching him live. But it, it, it was spread out over two, three windows, as I say, and probably even more than that, because at the time, either he had a longer contract and financially it wasn't, wasn't right for us and didn't fit. And then close to the time, um, the manager at the time wanted to go down a different route, uh, which, you know, it's a manager's prerogative. And so then when Mick finally came in, it was almost a, I, I always remember the first meeting we had, uh, I think we were all away at the time. Um, their backdrops were a little bit more impressive than mine, shall we say, but um, he, it was almost these are the players we're thinking, these are the players he's thinking. And there was a few names on there that we both had on our list and we'd done the work and Kenneth Powell was one of them. Uh, he obviously knew about him previously, we'd done a lot of work on him um, and we handed over a dossier to him and I think off the top of my head I think it was 36 pages long, that's the amount of work had gone into that. Um, in terms of the dossiers, there's, he had a lot of information in there from data, why we'd identified him in the first place, uh, character stuff, what we thought the financial stuff was going to be, um, scout reports, um, player history, injury history, their family history, that sort of stuff. So it was a fairly comprehensive document. So that one sort of fell into place a little bit. We're constantly evaluating players and, and there's obviously a room next door where it's just full of whiteboards with names on it. Um, so we're always gearing up to probably ideally two, three windows in advance because you need to be aware of what players' contracts are up. We might not need that position at the time, but we're aware in 18 months this player's contract is going to be coming to an end. So th there's no real obvious start point. It's just a continuous rolling thing. Um, and like I say, you need to try and take advantage of people's contracts and when, you know, and what positions we need at the time. But we, we always try to work two or three ahead if we can. There is no point in us trying to block pathways. If we've got kids coming through the academy that we think have got a good chance of playing for the first team, the last thing we want to do is go and sign a player that then blocks that player's pathway because we've already got them in the building. Um, sometimes you might need to do a little bit of a stopgap because the player in the building, we might think, might be six months away. So we might need to do a loan or, or an older player just to try and buy that player six months to develop enough in time because as much as we want them to get in the first team, we don't want to throw them in too early. And then, you know, it go badly and it might set them back further on, really, to be honest. We almost have to try and punch above our weight, really, I think. In, if you look at the last few transfer windows, in terms of transfer fees, we've spent very little, certainly compared to other teams in the league and certainly compared to other teams around us in the league at the moment. Um, <laughs> I think it's fair in saying those QPR days are long gone in terms of going and spending a lot of money with the profit and sustainability. Um, so we have, to, we have to try and think a little bit smarter than most clubs and probably try and act a little bit quicker. Um, I think in my tenure in this club, in the three and a half years or whatever it is since I've been in this role, I think we've done that quite well. Uh, we've certainly got, I would say we've got more right than, than I won't say wrong, but that some haven't worked out. Um, I think we've been very good at that. In terms of January, um, we think we know what positions we want. Um, 
we've certainly planned to know the positions we want and, and hopefully the players we want. This has all got to obviously fit in with the profit and sustainability situation in, in January. Um, you know, obviously my, my time at the club, although it's been 14 years in the grand scheme of things, is, is quite small. And, and the club and the fans will be here a long time after I'm not at the club. So, so one thing we won't do is try and put the club, or one thing we won't do is put the club in jeopardy long term. Yeah, I think so. I'd say I've, I've been here a long time now. Uh, I understand how the club works with its history, traditions and values. Um, that's something that helps me in the, in the club, uh, helps me operate. I know what QPR fans, how they want to play. I know how QPR, the DNA, how they want to play. Um, yeah, also my, my, my children are now QPR fans. So um, if I have accountability as soon as I walk through the door, certainly after a transfer window.